Ladies and gentlemen, the fateful, terrible day in January, two plus years ago, was not a rebellion. It was not a word that starts with I, okay, that Democrats use all the time. It was not a coordinated effort, nor was it an effort to overthrow any existing government. You'd have to be a complete buffoon to think that Donald Trump and legions of impressionable supporters invaded our nation's capital to try to overthrow the country and rebel and create a an orange utopia of Trumpism, where we had, by the way, record low poverty in 2019 and record highs in household median income in 2019. Poverty is up in the United States of America under Biden. Economic numbers are worse. That is a categorical fact. There is an endless uh, military quagmire in Europe that um, has brought the country 90 seconds closer to midnight, according to the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists. I mean, categorically, things are worse. Uh, But liberal Democrats are happy because they think they're going to be in charge forever and because they're in charge now. And so if you look, the Federal Bureau of Investigation found no evidence. They used the word scant. That's a semantic game. There was no evidence at all that anything was coordinated. It was a terrible day. We'll get to the billions in property damage linked to left-leaning organizations. Okay, I'm not saying that any specific organization caused billions upon billions in property damage, but you had chaos, mayhem, a complete and utter disregard for authority that entire summer. And, of course, Adam Kinzinger and Cheney and Democrats and media didn't care at all. They just turned, they just, you know, said, shrugged their shoulders, said, oh, well, that's no problem. It's all about that one day. So again, the double standard, the absurd analysis, how you can, how you can defend one, an entire summer of just where there's a breakdown in society and law and uh, civility and billions upon billions in property damage from people who were protesting against, let's just put it this way, the peaceful protesters I support and I agree with. Peaceful. I support peaceful uh, people who peacefully demonstrated against, uh, you know, I, I agree why they peacefully demonstrated. I don't agree with billions in property damage, a complete breakdown in society that summer prior to January. Okay, Um, but the people who focus on that one day in January completely ignore the entire summer because they say, well, it it was for a good cause. It's like, well, no, there were actually, there was actually a book written on how, um, chaos and mayhem is justified if the cause is good by a left-leaning pundit or author. Anyway, the, the Supreme Court will prevent any attempt at blocking or barring or banning Donald Trump. Uh, former President Trump from running in 24. Here you have a Reuters article. I'll go really quickly to the court cases, John Castro versus Donald Trump. Okay, that will be decided by the Supreme Court in a couple of months, and the Supreme Court will side with Trump. There's no way on the planet that the Supreme Court uh, will ban Trump because he engaged in a rebellion. That's what Article 3 says. You'd have to go, I mean, Section 3 um, of the 14th Amendment prohibits anyone who engaged in a rebellion. Trump did not do that. Again, what Democrats do is they're so apoplectic and there's Republicans, and you know, whether it's a Republican who thinks that Trump or conservative, well, whatever, Let's, it doesn't matter what political side you claim to be on, okay? If you're part of the United States establishment at the moment, you want Trump to be banned. And you, you've convinced yourself, and hit subscribe to this channel right now, ladies and gentlemen, you've convinced yourself that uh, Trump tried to overthrow the United States government because of a terrible, chaotic day that spun out of control, that he didn't... Or, you know, that he, if anything, there was a lack of organization. So he didn't organize it uh, as, as, you know, effectively or as logically or rationally as you would have wanted. Okay, so 
There should never have been that day, number one, for a number of reasons, even though Trump is very likely correct about a number of claims that he's made. But he did not engage in a rebellion. If anything, there were greater examples of a rebellion that summer. Okay, and then you have the Washington Post, for example, really quickly. Ron Johnson's misleading citation of data to back his concern about uh, a certain uh, organization. Okay, this is what the Washington Post does all the time. They take a, an opinion or a viewpoint that is backed by fact, and then they say, well, we disagree because our sensibilities... Um, liberal sensibilities don't, you know, don't see this as a valid concern. So if you have billions of dollars in property damage, maybe not associated directly with that specific group, but, but billions in property damage when that group was prominent that summer, it's logical to say, okay, whether it's that specific group or groups around that organization or uh, a quote-unquote movement or perhaps uh, left-leaning uh, demonstrators throughout that entire summer, the vast majority of which were left-leaning of all different types of organizations and ideologies, but left of center. What the Washington Post will say was, well, Ron Johnson is trying to blame all of the billions on one organization. And then they'll say, well, that, we give three Pinocchios for that. No, what the Washington Post and New York Times and MSNBC and CNN and New Yorker, The Atlantic, what they do is they wrap liberal sensibilities around a serious topic and say, that's not that important. In fact, you know, you can't really pin it on the left. Billions upon billions in property damage took place that summer. If, for example, there was one right-leaning organization and, and conservatives throughout that summer engaged in that type of behavior, that organization would have been blamed for everything. No one is blaming that specific left-leaning organization for everything. But what Ron Johnson and others have said is, look, you had primarily left-leaning groups of all different ideologies that entire summer. And you then had billions upon billions in property damage. Okay, so it's not a stretch, nor is it a leap of logic to say, Certain left-leaning organizations either led the way or were integral in perhaps creating a climate of, you know, chaos and mayhem throughout the summer, even though, even though the majority of demonstrations were peaceful. But that's not, there's, there's no solace in that if there's one to two billion dollars in property damage and people of color lost businesses also. There were black-owned businesses that were destroyed throughout the country. And so, again, you have this attempt by the Washington Post to downplay, that's a word that they use with Trump all the time, to downplay and to mitigate serious concerns about, you know, billions in property damage and focus on one specific day. Okay, so we've kind of addressed the double standard here. Uh, but here, Pennsylvania judge rules Trump's election, uh, Trump claims while in office were covered by presidential immunity. By the way, if you want to hit subscribe to this channel and read my writing in The Hill, The Huffington Post, Salon, The Jerusalem Post, The Federalist, and other publications, go to hagoodman.com. He's been, judges have been ru ruling in favor of Trump here and there on major issues. If a Pennsylvania judge rules that his claims are, are covered by presidential immunity, then the Supreme Court is going to rule that any speech that he conducted is also protected either by the First Amendment or by presidential immunity, or he, was, he conducted the speech while he was still president but outgoing. Uh, okay, Castro, uh, a Republican nomination next year, sent his petition to the Supreme Court last month asking justice, justices to answer whether political candidates can challenge the eligibility of another candidate. Okay, um... And so the lawsuits argued that it should not be based on Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, but he didn't engage in a rebellion. Trump did not engage in a rebellion. There was no effort to overthrow anything. There, was, there were people who walked in that building, literally walking, and then getting sentenced to years and years in prison. So again, the double standard. You had people, you had people throwing incendiaries, like former... Uh, attorneys, and I think it was like a New York, either New York law school, I forgot exactly. You had two people throwing incendiaries at police vehicles. 
and they didn't even get jail time or prison time. Anyway, give me your thought. And then you see people walking and it's like, oh my God, they tried to rebel against the country. Give me your thoughts below. Hit subscribe right now. There's no way the Supreme Court rules against Trump on this. He will be on the ballot and he has a very good chance of winning. Give me your thoughts. Thank you.